when a smartly dressed gentleman named Christopher Vincent signed in at the Global Humanitarian Aviation Conference in Egypt in October 2019, an event sponsored by the World Food Programme, he was greeted warmly by the organisers. The event, in the resort of Sharm El Sheikh, was attended by people who deliver air services to charitable and disaster relief groups including the Red Cross and Medicine Sun Frontier. He was there to meet key contacts who were involved in a plan to invest in a tiny air ambulance service in Malawi called Nyasa Air Charters, who had no knowledge of his true background and identity. The reality was that they were greeting the leader of one of Europe's most notorious gangs, a narcotics, money laundering and arms trafficking cartel with ties to Asia, Latin America and the Middle East. Nicknamed the Dapper Don, he holds Irish and UK passports, speaks with an Anglo-Irish accent and has previously lived in Spain and Belgium. He can converse in French, Dutch and Spanish. The man's real name? Christopher Vincent Kinahan. Kinahan presented himself as having a particular interest in the provision of aviation services to humanitarian aid organizations working in sub-Saharan Africa. However, this was of course a cover, and his true intentions were something far more sinister. He had identified a country in southern Africa as a foreign bolt hole to escape to should his empire collapse. Not only that, but a plan had also been masterminded to procure a suite of aircraft likely to be used in the importation of illegal contraband. This video will shed light on this incredible tale, another chapter in the cartel's remarkable story. You are watching OCG TV. It would really help us if you could subscribe to the channel. The benefit to you is that you will be alerted every time we upload a video for your enjoyment. For us, it pushes the profile of the channel in YouTube's algorithm and allows us to produce a higher number of videos for you. We thank you in advance for your support with this. Chapter 1 Zimbabwe The risk of arrest and subsequent imprisonment, it sort of comes with the territory when you're an international drug smuggler. Therefore, it should be no surprise that the smart ones will have an exit plan. When the heat turns on, when the warrants are issued, one needs to have a location to escape to and take cover until things die down. Kinahan hadn't just picked Zimbabwe as his fugitive holiday home on a random basis. There is a lot to like. A favourable climate all year round, an opaque banking system, and if you have money, you can live under the radar without too much attention from the authorities. Irish police believed that Kinahan had begun working on his Zimbabwe exit plan about five years ago, and that they believe he last flew to Zimbabwe in March 2022, shortly before the US imposed sanctions on him on April 12 of the same year. And so today, the United States Department of State is pleased to announce a reward of up to $5 million for information leading to the financial disruption of the KTCO or the arrest and convictions of its leaders, Christopher Vincent Kinahan, Daniel Joseph Kinahan, and Christopher Kinahan Jr. He had plans to establish a hideout in Zimbabwe, but authorities denied his residency application. It has been confirmed that he started at least one business in the country, a construction company based in the capital, Harare. He lived in a rented property in Harare for months at a time and would have been entitled to a renewable 12-month business residence permit designed for foreign nationals intending to invest and create jobs to support the local economy. Chapter 2 The Deal The announcement from the Americans forced the Kinahan Group right into the international media spotlight. While Christie's son, Daniel Kinahan, was happy to be a well-known face, evidenced by his well-publicized ownership of boxing promotions company MTK, his father had lived his criminal life in the shadows. Suddenly, media outlets who had really forgotten about the once big name in gangland were interested in his activities once more. 
A recent investigation provided an unprecedented insight into the double life that Kinahan, who is rarely photographed, has been living while posing as business and aviation consultant Christopher Vincent. Documents show that Kinahan made a daring bid with a group of associates to purchase a fleet of Egyptian military transport aircraft as a potential haven and to establish new bases along drug trafficking routes in Africa. The fresh cachet of Kinahan documents shines a light on the inner workings of a shadowy operation that apparently was intended to provide planes to a notorious crime boss so that he could more easily move drugs, money, people, or whatever else he desired around Africa and the Middle East. The attempted purchase of planes from the Egyptian Air Force was one of several Kinahan efforts to buy old military aircraft in Africa. It is believed that Kinahan had various plans for the planes, to refurbish some to use in relief and tourism flights, to resell some whole or as parts, and to keep others. A central player in the audacious plan was a local businessman named Adam Lincoln Woodington Wood. Leaked documents shown to a major newspaper confirmed that the pair were working with an Egyptian lawyer, Ibrahim El Dasuki, and several Zimbabwean and UK-based aviation and financial figures tied to Wood as they attempted to pull off the deal. Kinahan and Wood were photographed grinning at the 2019 aviation conference in Sharm El Sheikh. In the photo, Kinahan and Wood sport conference lanyards around their necks, wear luxury watches on their wrists, and have two phones each close at hand on top of a glass table. Adam Wood is tied to several companies that Kinahan used to try to facilitate aircraft purchases and other deals. Those companies are Dubai-based CV Aviation Consulting Services, DWC LLC, Singapore-based Crescents and Crosses Proprietary Limited, Nyasa Air Charters Limited, and Sea Dream Middle East General Trading. In 2003, in his mid-twenties, Daniel Kinahan was registered as the director of a property investment firm in Spain called Sea Dream Homes SL. Nearly two decades later, Sea Dream Middle East General Trading joined the family portfolio. Kinahan's web of shady business and offshore accounts spun over 20 years is becoming visible to the public for the first time. Chapter 3 Smoke and Mirrors Leaked emails show Kinahan pushing for the formation of crescents and crosses in Singapore so that it could negotiate the Egyptian deal under the pretense that Crescents and Crosses owned Nyasa air charters, suggesting a strong profile in Africa. Kinahan also pressed for Wood to run daily operations and for Sea Dream's managing director, Ibrahim El Dasuki, to control the financial dealings on the Egypt project. In late 2019, Kinahan explained in an email that he wanted the Crescents and Crosses website to create a smoke and mirrors illusion that we are bigger and better than a mere startup company, so that Crescents and Crosses would be in pole position for aircraft finance and for leasing facilities. Crescents and Crosses were to be the holding company for the deal. Nyasa, which is understood to have had only one aircraft at the time, was to use the Egyptian aircraft. Shortly after the infamous aviation conference on January 8, 2020, Sea Dream Middle East General made inquiries about purchasing aircraft from the Egyptian military. Sea Dream's managing director, Elder Suki, spoke with the Egyptian contact in Abu Dhabi, Brigadier Hisham Nahil Monir, about buying up to nine DHC Buffalo military transport planes for as much as $8 million. On February 11, 2020, Monir sent Sea Dream a list of aircraft for sale, along with spare parts and equipment an official document that was leaked and showed the Egyptian government were willing to part with as many as 30 planes. Kinahan operated as the puppet master, giving the instruction to his team who were controlling his pieces in this game of commercial chess with the Egyptian military representative. The two sides agreed field inspection to take place at the Al Mazar Air Force Base in Cairo. Negotiations were moving in the right direction and a draft contract was published. The contract permitted Sea Dream to bring containers to Egyptian airbases and depots to pick up the equipment being purchased. It also granted permission to remove any Egyptian flags and tail numbers on the aircraft and prohibited mention of any sale to the media. The stumbling block seemed to be financing the deal. 
This may sound unusual considering the Kinahan crime cartel is worth over $1 billion. However, it can be easy to forget that cash is often tied up in assets or is not quickly accessible if located overseas. Kinahan and Elder Suki met in January 2021 with a Dubai-based lender, Alpen Asset Advisors Limited, to finance the purchase of the Egyptian aircraft. In the meeting, Elder Suki said the deal would be in the region of $20 million, according to minutes leaked to the media. Elder Suki and Kinahan agreed that they could probably come up with 25%. Kinahan admitted defeat around this time. He notified his team that the deal was cancelled. He declared that the Buffalo deal is now officially closed. A copy of a letter that was intended to be sent to the Egyptian Defence Ministry listed a number of technical problems in the aircraft to justify the cancellation. Chapter 4 What Next? It can be safe to assume that Kinahan would not have been able to make much use of the planes should the deal have been completed. The net is firmly closing around the cartel after the extreme sanctions imposed by the United States, placing $5 million bounties on him and his two sons. They are effectively finished as a criminal group. Finished, but still not in custody. But where is Christy Kinahan, one of the world's most wanted men? Could he contemplate a life in Afghanistan, Pakistan or Zimbabwe, as has been reported? How much would a drugs baron be willing to compromise on lifestyle in exchange for freedom? The intelligence services have information to suggest Christie made his way to Southeast or Central Asia, but this tip has been contradicted by information that places him as still being in Dubai. Both could be accurate, as the Kinahans are known to have possession of multiple fake passports and to travel by private jet, allowing them to move about the Gulf states. Dubai is already home to Russian kleptocrats, Italian mafiosos, Afghan warlords, Iranian spies and African gold smugglers. Built to attract foreign investors, it is now regarded as a pivotal location where organized crime, terrorism and legitimate enterprises meet. Those who follow the wider story closely believe we'll see an arrest sometime this year. Whether there is indeed an arrest or not, one thing is for sure. There are certain to be more wild and fascinating subplots that come out of this seemingly never-ending story. You have been watching OCG TV. What do you think about Christy Kinahan's master plan to flee to Zimbabwe and operate a fleet of aircraft? And where do you think the group is hiding out? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Till next time, goodbye.